start recording. So let me share the screen and you will see. Wonderful NTS. We welcome everyone, students, sponsors, military, and of course our MSEC leadership and everybody that has been enjoying the national training session so far. Um, we're going to present to you about recruiting during Rona. Um, we had a lot of success. Uh, we, we see that um, this year has been interesting for everyone. So we just wanted to begin by what we did first when we recruited um, for new membership. Okay. First, Alexis is going to, I'm Miss Marion. I'm the sponsor of our North Augusta um, High School S2S. This is Alexis. She's been with S2S for two years now. So she's one of our veteran members and she's gonna to talk to you and I'm gonna kind of help out with a little bit about how we raise the awareness about what S2S is and what we hold dear and what we focus on throughout the year. Lexis, you wanna to talk to him about a raising awareness? Yeah, so one of the main things that we did to try and get the word out about our club and let it be more aware what we do and that we exist in the first place is we made little videos that we would send in to our news show that plays at school in the mornings. It's sent to teachers like every week mm -hmm. or so, I think. And then they're played during homeroom and there's a ton of different informational stuff on it where they talk about different things happening at our school. And it was a really good way to get information out about our club and let people know about what we have going on and different events that we have happening. And then another way that we would get it out there besides just the videos is we made flyers that we would hang up around school so that people could see them and then they could go and find Miss Marion and ask her more questions for more information and possibly come and join and hang out with us and get to know more about us in person. Um, so let's go ahead and show you that video real quick that we made that we shared with everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen and we're going to go ahead and let you see what we did. So here's the video that we shared with our news channel of just letting them know who S2S is and what we do and who we are. We were a really small group starting out. We had five, five starting active mm -hmm. members when we did this. Though I'm not a military rat, I still want to welcome you to North Augusta High School. Hola, me llamo Mi. My name is Emil. I was born in Puerto Rico and I moved here at the age of nine. Now I'm an S2S ambassador for North Augusta High School. Hi, I'm Kaylee and I'm a sophomore here at North Augusta High School. I am a Navy brat and have lived everywhere from Colorado to New Jersey and now I'm a student ambassador for S2S. Hi, my name is Alexis. I'm a former Navy brat, and my mom currently works for the federal government. I've been to eight different states, and I've gone to nine different schools, but I've been at North Augusta for a year and a half. And as a S2S student ambassador, I want to help new kids just like me find their ways around school and make new friends. Hey, what's up? My name is Eman. I come from the Ivory Coast and I speak two languages, which is English and French. I wrestle here at the high school and I also play in the band. And I think S2S is really cool because I can help out people in my community. We are S2S, 100% acceptance, 24-7, and 365 days. If you'd like any more information, please see Miss Mary in the room D205. And also, follow us on Instagram. For the new membership drive, interested students can pick up an application in English room D205. Anyone can join. So that's what we did to help out um, get get what we who we are, what we do, and what we focus on to the entire school. So it was a lot of fun making it. There's a lot of stories about how certain people got up on the walls of the school. A lot of fun with the different languages, putting the video together. It was a blast just making it from what I hear. I don't vacuum know. Cleaners. And vacuum, vacuum we had some cleaners. issues with some vacuum cleaners. So just realize, especially when it comes to like Francis Hesselbein and the, the whole basis of you can overcome things that can include vacuum cleaners, just saying. <laughs> Um, okay, and the other thing I wanted to share with you really quick is the flyers that we did. So we're going to see if this works just as well as the first time. <laughs> and we're going to try to share out the flyers that the students made. Um, the first one 
was just an informational flyer. Um, it had where they needed to go, um, which was me and what we um, focus on, which is helping new kids, making friendships. And of course, um, once they come into us and our 100% acceptance was probably the most that we wanted to focus on is that we welcomed everybody. And so we put that on every single thing we could. Um, and you're going to hear about that a little bit later, not just the video, not just the flyers, but we also put it on our um, T-shirts that we made for our school. So we really wanted to focus on that. The next flyer that we created and that I wanna share with you real quick, let's see how quickly I can do this. So the next flyer I wanted to share. So this is the other one that we did. Um, and this was probably the most famous one. This is the one that all the teachers wanted in their room. This is the one the students loved the most. Which is funny because initially it was just a joke. Yeah. <laughs> made it as a joke. <laughs> Emil and Alexis made it as a joke. And then I was like, I love that. <laughs> and so that kind of just once again was just how we wanted to come across is that anybody that was lost, anybody that was new, we want you with us. Um, and it also helped people know even more the message and if they will be interested in becoming a part of our group. So that was how we publicized. Um, Alexis is also gonna tell you about the social media that we used. Um, we had someone over our Instagram page and they would post our flyers whenever we made them, as well as advertise a lot of the stuff that we had before, like whenever they went to Washington, we had photos from that on our Instagram. And then anytime that we had an event or we made something that we were advertising around school, it would get posted onto our social media. And then sometimes the school social media would see that and then post it on their social media, which would help us get a lot more coverage for more people to see it because we didn't have that many followers, but having the page itself had helped the school Instagram see our Instagram and then help further promote whatever we would post and advertise. So S2S groups, hashtag follow us. <laughs> we follow that. Okay. The next thing we wanted to do is, uh, I'm gonna pass the camera over as delicately as I can so I don't shut off the computer. And I'm gonna invite one of our new members, actually two of our new members, Simone and Liberty. Um, Liberty is a junior now or senior? senior? She's a senior now. I'm not going to let her go. And Simone is also senior. a senior. They're all senior. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about. This. So I'm going to discuss with you how S2S members themselves become the best recruitment. Okay, so while in school, we look for people who will be accepting of other people yeah and we will let people into their groups or invite people in so that they could have a friend group like if you've ever been to a new school you know how it is when you just sit in the cafeteria and there's a whole bunch of people but you're sitting by yourself we are those people that will sit with you and talk to you and make you feel welcome in our group and make you not feel so lonely Just a quick question, what else would you do as an S2S member to find new members while you're in class? Oh, um, so we ask teachers if there's any new students or any new people that haven't been in the Augusta area, North Augusta area, and haven't been here. So we'll find them, look for them, and then we'll help them out, look around the school so they know where everything's at. So basically, how I was recruited was this morning. She basically was like, come on, join, 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 you know, join. But how we recruit people is we like to find people that are accepting of other people so that they can help accept other people, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I know that didn't. That did. Okay. It did. It did. Yeah. Okay, I was recruited from a friend who was in S2S. He's a veteran. How long is, how long is he been it's in? Three years. Three years. He's been in for three years. And he kept asking me to do it. And he asked until I contacted Miss Marion and got the application. And I was really nervous about it at first, but then it was, it was fun. And the club is great. The other thing that I really want to, that I, I guess for sponsors is if you're not on campus, 
tap into your teachers. Have your teachers send you names and have your teachers talk to students that they know are real good cheerleaders for the school and are really accepting of multiple and different, not multiple personalities, but multiple types of people. Have them reach out, use your, use your staff and faculty because they will have a lot to say about students that aren't as involved, but they see as a shining light. And we kind of go in and welcome them, maybe harass a little bit, but in a very kind, <laughs> non-threatening way, just saying. Um, the next thing that I really wanted to go over with to kind of help on how we got our numbers, we went from five active members to 20 active mem members during Rona. So the first thing that we went over is raising awareness. Use whatever means you have possible. If you don't have a school news show, use social media. The Anything and everything when it comes to social media, all types, all avenues. Um, because if you don't get in touch with a student, the parents may see it and then talk to their students. So use all of those. The other way we recruited members, Liberty being one of them, we invited them to events before we even really sold our group. So if you have an event, invite people that aren't necessarily new students, but that are someone that you think would be interested in the organization. So I'm gonna switch it off again to Alexis and she can talk about the application. We made an application that we felt would ensure that we had active students and it worked really well. Um, some of the questions we asked on that application were very specific to what their schedule was like, what they, uh, definite questions they actually had to write long answers to. I'm an English teacher. Um, and would be is, what do they feel about 100% acceptance? How do they feel about meeting new people? That kind of thing to gauge their comfort level because not everybody is an extrovert. Some people are better behind the scenes which is the perfect job for them to handle your social media. So don't forget those introverts, they have great skills, even if they're not too comfortable with doing the new student intro. I'm gonna train it over, train, switch it over to Alexis so she can tell you about how we not only felt that raising the awareness of our club and inviting people and looking for people and recruiting, but a strong part of why we were able to keep and keep them active was that we trained them well. And that came from our initial training from NSEC. So just saying, Military Child Education Coalition was great at training us originally, and we took those lessons and turned them into our training program. So to get our applications out there to new students that would come to our school, we all got together one Friday during homeroom and we created like a factory line where we made folders that had pens and different flyers that we created with a ton of information about North Augusta and our area. And then another flyer we created with information solely just about S2S and what we do. And then once we got that and we got more people, we did a training where we kind of made a PowerPoint with a ton of information about S2S, including the house of S2S, which you have on the back of your shirt. Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> Do we have it on the back of the shirt? No, we no, don't. No, we don't. But oh, we have our message on the back of the shirt. There. We'll talk about our shirts later. Yeah. Um, and then we paired up a new member with a member that was already a part of the club. And we had them sort of, uh, Miss Marion had chalk markers. And she had us ask each other questions that you would ask a new student so we can try and weed out what you should and what you shouldn't ask someone that's new to school so that you don't freak them out whenever they're new and they don't know anybody so that and they, they use more... the chalk markers to write those on the desk so they would brainstorm and write all over our school desk it comes off very easily teachers <laughs> use it sponsors it's amazing and then we afterwards we all kind of came back together after breaking up into our pairs and we sort of went over all of our questions and then explained which ones shouldn't be asked to a new kid and then explains which ones should be asked and which ones you should focus on asking to get to know them more and get them more comfortable and just get them to loosen up a little bit and build a bridge to possibly get them to become like a new friend for you. Yeah. And goofiness. We, we, we thrive <laughs> on goofiness. The very last thing we did for our recruitment, and this was at the end of the year and to pave the way for our next year, is I got to sit back and do nothing, which is always fun as a sponsor. And we had about what, 
five, six, seven students mm -hmm. attend the Freshman Expo. Um, our school, if your school doesn't have one of these, really do the work. Students, get out there, talk to your administration and get them to have a Freshman Expo. Our school, North Augusta High School, does it at the end of the year and it's for our incoming freshmen. We have two feeder middle schools and they come at the same evening back to back. So one school will come at the 6.30, like a five to six shift, the next school will come to six to seven. And students made this beautiful thing behind us, which just showed events that we had. It gave the house of S2S. And then of course, some of the stats of military students and what they go through, how many times they move and how important it is that we accept and give them a place while they're here, no matter how temporary. And of course it had our flyers for the coffee talk. And it also had one of the things that we feel is the best message we can give. And that's good friends are like stars. You don't always see them, but you know, they're always there, which is what we try to do is even if, even if they don't become best friends, like the people at this table and some of our other members that couldn't be here, they still know that we're there and we support them and we'll get we'll give them help in any way they need it, whether it's academically or um, how to get around the area or about the community. So that was the Freshman Expo pretty much. Do you want to talk to them about the lanyards and our t-shirts as a way of how we promoted ourselves? Yes. So we made a ton of t-shirts. And we had this event in April where we did this walkathon with our district. And one of the things that we put on it is that if you submitted your miles within like a certain time, you would get a t-shirt as a way to kind of just get students. Cause whenever kids hear that they're gonna win something they always manage to do it for some <laughs> whatever reason. So getting students that would be motivated to submit miles for the one thing also got us a way to just get t-shirts out there to other kids even if they didn't want to join the club you know they were, they were going to wear it to school eventually and then it's just a way to get our club out there through shirts and then we tried to wear them as a club every friday whenever we would have some kind of event like a coffee talk or if we were just having a meeting with just us we tried to all wear our s2s shirts so we kind of have like a designated day that we're all wearing them and then when we're not wearing them we made lanyards that we all tried to either wear it's it is we yeah, glued it <laughs> we all tried to either wear it or we would like tie it to our backpacks or put it somewhere on what we carry at school every day so that if someone spots it or if a new kid finds out like hey look for a kid with an s2s lanyard then they can spot us out and talk to us if they ever need anything so it's kind of like it's kind of coinciding it's, with like our superhero thing, yeah. you know, like your little bat signal. Yep, it's our bat signal, but it's purple. So we tell them <laughs> to look for the purple. So yeah, that, that was one of the other ways that, and it became really important to our S2S members that they had it. Like that lanyard became, I need to have it. It needs to be on my book bag. Students need to know I'm someone they can come to. Even if they're not a new student, I'm someone that can help them out. And I'm willing to, to listen and to help. Yeah, I broke mine a few times and I was popping into Miss Marion's room during a passing period. Like, I need oh. another one. Yeah, I have lots of them one. and they're very cheap. Amazon is, is the way to go to get really cheap materials for that. And I think that's it. That's kind of how we, we grew from five to 20 active members. Um, it's a wonderful, diverse group. It's a wonderful program. And as a sponsor, I'm so happy to be with it and so happy to be with the students. I have a good time. Okay. Great job, guys. Um, real quick, we're going to do like a couple minutes of just a little Q&A session because um, I think the people in the audience will probably benefit from me asking some questions and you guys sharing a little bit more insight on what you guys did. It sounds like you guys did an amazing job at recruiting new students, um, new members for your S2S program. Um, how did you guys determine when to stop recruiting or did you stop recruiting? Are you guys continually looking for new members or is it like a like a session that you do once a year to recruit new members. Just tell me about like the, the timeline of recruitment. Um, we're still continuing to recruit, especially with Freshman Expo happening right at the end of the year. We're hoping to hit the ground running as soon as the year starts and start to reach out to those freshmen at the Freshman Expo that we're interested in our club and get them to come to whatever event we try to plan at the beginning of the year so that we can talk to them and get to know them and then whichever ones want to officially join, then we can branch that into doing some kind of training session for them so that we try and get as many people as we can on board early on into the year. So then we have more people to continue recruiting through next year. 
Awesome, very cool. Um, you mentioned you guys have a like an event sort of at the beginning of the year to sort of train new members and things like that. Um, how do you how do you train new members? Like, what what does that look like at your school? Oh, we made a PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we do sessions. Really? Yeah. Sessions. The sessions that I went to? Okay, sessions? yeah, that's okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I went to one of the training sessions for when I started. And basically when we went in there, we um we sat down and we introduced ourselves. And then we started just talking about the club and asking each other questions about what we did and what we were like. Very cool. So just sort of act like having just more of a normal conversation with the people who are interested, like, here's what we do and here's what it's like, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And then so try to like get them comfortable in the very beginning and then go branch into actually going over what with like the questions and what they should and shouldn't do with a new student when meeting a new student to help them feel comfortable to kind of try and make sure that they're comfortable before we go and go on. Awesome. Well, that sounds really great. Um, so a lot of the times I remember when I was in high school in my S2S program um, a few years back, um, it was kind of tricky to keep members engaged over the summertime. So you guys said that you you did a lot of recruiting during your freshman expo at the end of the school year. Um, how have you kept members engaged over the summer or just maintained in contact with them? And then once it hits like the beginning of the next school year, how do you guys plan on preparing members um, when there's sort of that big influx of, of new students? Do you guys do the training, you know, before school starts, um, right at the beginning of school, or how does that work? Um, we'll probably do it before the year starts, and then we'll probably do it, like, every year. It'll probably be, like, a yearly thing that we try to do as, like, a membership drive thing and to kind of get people interested and get people to try and show up and come to get to know more about our club. Um, Summer-wise... You know, we just, we all have some form of connection to each other. So it makes it really easy to keep all together and make sure everybody is still going to be involved because there's, there's a ton of friendships all connected. We're all connected through somebody in some way in the club. We're all kind of like a little tight knit family with how much time we always spend together. Um, and then we hope to continue to have that grow with newer members and they can just continue to become a part of the family. So then it keeps us all kind of as like a little tight knit group, which makes it really easy to make sure everybody is still active and gonna participate. Yeah, Miss Mary's our mom. She is. She's our mom. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, awesome. That's so cool. I think that's it's such a great way to like maintain a group is when the the members themselves sort of reach out and are the ones to recruit new members because then those members can you know connect to their people and say you know remember we have this thing going on don't forget about um the, how how important the beginning of the school year is and all that stuff. So that's really great. Um, and I've heard a lot of um, S2S teams also will do like team bonding activities throughout the year just to like get to know one another a little bit more because it's so much easier as an S2S group when you're working as a team and you know the people that are that are also members on your S2S team. So, you know, oh, I have a new student, but I have something I have to do at lunch. Do you mind sitting with them? It makes it a lot easier when it's when it's that team flow for sure. Um, okay, so just one more quick question for you guys. Um, I've heard a lot of S2S um, teams sort of have trouble sustaining their group. So it sounds like you guys have a really big, you know, 20 person group now. Um, how do you plan on keeping those members engaged throughout the school year and like coming back year after year um, throughout their high school careers? Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Ooh, lots of snacks. There you go. Food um, seems to be our convincer. If we tell them, you know, there's going to be food, a lot of people tend to show up. Yeah, plus if you just hang out with Ms. Marion as often as we do now and we're out of school, then you'll want to stay and just hang out with her and just talk to her about everything and anything. Yeah, a lot of our new members, we would like drag them into whatever meeting that we have and our meetings never last as short as we want them to never. because we always end up doing something else. And then they're like hanging out with us and they're like, okay, wait, yeah, I want to come back. This was a lot of fun. So let's kind of try, we try to get them to see like what we have going on and try to make it as fun as possible whenever we're not having to focus on strictly business and it makes them want to come back because they know, you know, you're still going to have fun at the end of the day. Oh yeah. And then because of Rona, we had a lot of um, problems because some kids were virtual and some kids were on campus and then some kids could come to stuff and some kids couldn't. So we kind of tried to 
accommodate that as much as possible while still trying to have us all together as much as we could and with as many people as we could. So some meetings had like more people, some of them had like two or three of us. It kind of just depended on what was going on in everyone's lives, but we still always tried to make it as known as possible so that whoever could come and whoever could make it, made it. And then with everything else, we just tried to keep hanging out as much as we could. We just made it very, feel very like a family and like everybody could say what they wanted and feel free to do what they wanted and speak for themselves freely. So, yeah. Awesome. That's so cool. It sounds like you guys are really great at just sort of creating that that group dynamic um, that makes people want to keep coming back. So I think that's so important. And I really think you guys portrayed that during your webinar today. So. All right, thank you. I know that Alexis and uh, Ms. Marion are both here if you have questions to ask. And I know there are a couple in the chat that were, um, were pretty good, might need answers to. One of them, Amira, did you wanna ask your question? Uh, sure. So um, I was just curious though, as you guys were talking about, um, you know, staying together over the summer, did you, you use social media for your recruitment? So did you use any sort of social media over the summer as well to kind of keep everybody engaged? Um, so since most of us are pretty close, some of us do speak over social media because that's how we contact each other. But we also use Remind and Miss Marion will send out a chat telling us, hey, we're going to try and meet on this date at this time, see you all who can attend. And whoever's not in the Remind chat, we usually can figure out who isn't. So we try to reach out to them sometimes through social media. Sometimes we'll have their direct numbers and we'll tell them like, hey, we're trying to meet on this day at this time. Are you going to be able to make it? And then we try to get a head count to see all who's going to show up. I've been, I've been really tempted to switch it to like just an old school phone tree. <laughs> school email doesn't work so well. I've noticed that's a failure, especially over the summertime. So I use uh -huh. it. And then that, like Alexa said, the students are so good about tagging other people that they know haven't joined the remind, but um, none of the students use Facebook anymore. No, it's old people. You know, I Sorry. kind of figured I'm, I'm kind of the old people, so I get it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So uh, question about, you had the freshman expo where you were recruiting the new, fr the new students, the new freshmen to your campus. Do you have an S2S in your middle schools that feeds into your school? So we have a JS2S at both of our feeder middle schools. And we tried to reach out to them at like the end of the year last year. But because we weren't able to do field trips at our school and have people visit us, sorry, my dog, I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we weren't able to have them actually come on campus. And then because of scheduling of other people in our club, we weren't able to plan something to like meet up with them. Mm -hmm. But we do plan on trying to get in contact with them again this year and actually find a way to meet up with them and work with them so that they can actually help prepare whoever's in the JS2S for whenever they come to the high school and join our SOS. Excellent, excellent. I had another question. Um, any, anyone else? Because I just forgot it. So, um, oh yes. Um, so what's the makeup of the members that you have? I know you had seniors, Liberty and Simone or seniors. Alexis, are you a senior, junior? I don't. Um, I'm a senior. I think most of most of us are seniors. I think we have one one who's a junior. I know Kaylee's a junior. I think I think the rest of us are seniors because most of us okay. most of us are seniors. I don't. We really struggled with trying to find um, freshmen last year to join, so then we could have sophomores, and we tried really hard because all we had was people who were about to reach their senior year or junior year. And we just didn't achieve it as much as we wanted to, though we wanna try and fix that this year so that we actually do have people who 
who are still going to be in the club and we can still have those higher numbers whenever all of us that are upperclassmen graduate and leave. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know, Miss Marion, you don't want to lose all of those seniors. <laughs> You've got a great crew there. They are my founding members, but we do have um, Kaylee Lewis is one of our strong members and she's a rising junior. But we have mostly junior seniors. We did at the expo have some JS2S members see us, find us, and talk to us. So I hope we have a better freshman group coming into this next year because we've been so proactive with recruitment that those, because it's a lot of upperclassmen, I think it will draw some of the underclassmen in because it's got that cool factor of having upperclassmen to hang out with. But yeah, that's one of our main goals. Um, as we grow into next year, as Alexa said, we have a list already that we're just like, okay, next thing, next thing's this. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna check through it. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. So, um, any other questions? Yeah. So, else? with that, what does um? And I, I'm not very familiar with the area there. So, what does the move cycle look like there? Because I know that in some places that um, that I've been stationed at, and especially when I was growing up and a military student myself, um, you know, you would really hit like a year where you didn't get that many new students, and then the next year you would get an onslaught of new students. So, what does that look like, and how does that play into your recruitment? Alexis, you want me to take this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm a military kid too and a military, well, well, my husband's retired now, but a military spouse. Um, our area is right on the border of Georgia. So to, to go to Georgia is like a two minute jump from our high school. So we do get Port Gordon students. Our main population is National Guard. So they don't move as much. But because of Fort Gordon's cybersecurity development right now, our area is also developing a big cybersecurity. So when we have new students come in, we actually have phase built our high school. So our high school is completely brand new. And we have, it was built with the intention that we knew we were going to grow. So whereas um, Fort Gordon schools are seeing a lot more influx um, we're not seeing as much, but we see more than the standard public school that's not close to a base. So it's not as high as you would expect, but it's also not as low as normal, just because we are so close to Fort Gordon and, and we're so close to that border, it's really easy to get those military families. I've had families come and go. I've only been at the high school for four years total, and I've had families leave and come back while I was there just because that's the way their their military career took them wow so that's a lot a lot of moving but that's that's so good to hear that y'all are you are knowledgeable and on top of it um any other questions so i want to give us enough time to wrap up and then we will um, and make sure you have time to go to the next session and then so there's a couple things just as a reminder, MSEC has partnered with USAA to create SchoolQuest, which is a, a tool for students so that you can track your resources, information, credits, uh, subjects you need to take, those kinds of things, uh, school documents. And it's, it allows you to transport. It's online and it transports and it's free. Uh, you just have to sign on um, and just create your own account. And then you can use it. It covers all 50 states. So hopefully you will um, take a moment to create a free account and check it out. And I will put that in the chat. There's a, in case you don't have it, it is SchoolQuest at militarychild.org. And we, we have heard of uh, counselors using it. So for their students, there we go. So schoolquest at militarychild.org. Um, also, just thank you for joining us today. I, have, I want to say this session was sponsored by USAA. And there, if you complete the survey at the end of the conference, you will be entered to win a $25 gift card 
for attending this session and completing the survey. So the survey link will be posted, it's not out yet. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the seminar and don't miss the Student to Student Team of the Year Awards immediately following the last general session, which is tomorrow. Also, we have um, a Student Achievement Masterclass on STEM careers with, it's a panel with Boeing at 2.30 Eastern Time, 1.30 Central. So, oh, thank you, Amira, um, for the link. So please attend that because it should be really good since you've got all the um, crypto and those kinds of cybersecurity going in your area that might be beneficial. So thank you very much for attending and we hope to see you at the next, um, the next session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.